What is a country really but a demarcated piece of land on this planet? Everyone has one. Unless I suppose if you're nomadic, in which case I think you should get yourself one soon because living is just not worth it without one. I mean, in the long run at least. Here's mine incidentally. Pakistan. Yes, the accent that you have was completely cultivated here. The English made their mark on us before they left. And I shall have you know that we do not travel on camels, as some foreigners still seem to believe. <laughs> That's a recreational activity, Pani Singh. Anyhow, welcome to the essential guide to northern Pakistan. By me, Muru. This guide will be a sort of summary of what one should do when visiting Pakistan for the first time. I think the ideal time to visit is between March and April. This is spring season and it's pleasant almost all across Pakistan. In winter, some of the northern roads are blocked with snow and summer can be unbearably hot in some cities. So, you have 30 days and you're in the mood to explore, to reach out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Chalo. You start your journey by landing in Islamabad. Why, you ask? Well, firstly, because it's got this grand new airport. And secondly, because it's the capital and the center of diplomacy. So it's far more foreigner friendly in that more people speak English here. And the majority of embassies are here too. You would stay at the Srina, unless you are on a tight budget. Let's acknowledge that by landing here, you have sacrificed sin and Balochistan. But unfortunately, time does not permit us to visit all of endless Pakistan. But I think it's a fair compromise, since the mountains are by far the most charming aspect of this country. There are no two opinions about this, it's a fact. Think about the Karakuram range. Think about the Hindu Gush. Think about it. Think about the smell of the weed that is growing there. The hippie trail. Kya kya rata mein? Oh haan. You start at the crack of dawn from Islamabad and you head towards Nathya Gali by road. Put the keys in your bag, let's go. Soon, flat land will turn into lush green mountains. And the smell of oak, cedar and pine will fill the air you'll gain elevation and arrive at your first getaway, Nathya Gali, a mountain resort. You might take long walks down previously established trails. You might all huddle next to a fire. You might climb the Miranjani or the Mokshpuri. At night, you could try out Taj Hotel's signature Nathya Gili chicken. Your taste buds will be delighted and your teeth will melt. <sighs> if you're lucky, a fog sometimes wraps around Nathya Gili, like a blanket. It balms your senses as you succumb to its blindness. You're lucky to be in the fog's cold embrace. It might rain down ice balls later at the bazaar. I mean, hail, that's a better word. Ice balls. Well, balls or not, you will find Nathya Gali enchanting and might think of coming here someday to retire. But before the idolatry of pacifism cements itself in your mind, you must move on to the next destination. The ride is full of lush landscapes. And even though it can get dizzyingly bumpy at times, the eye candy more than makes up for it. Naran is perhaps the most breathtaking part of Kagan Valley. And it is situated on the bank of Kunhar River. From here, you can hike to Sefal Maluk. And from there, you could trek to Asu Lake. 
Aansu means teardrop in Urdu. And doesn't this remind you of one? I mean, you could float down Kunhar River as well if you wanted. You should want to. It's fun after all. You can stay at the Pakistan Tourism Development Corporation Hotel. Let's just call it the PTTC. It's simple. It's economical. I mean, they've got Wi-Fi. And the one in Narhan is situated on the bank of Kunhar River. So you hear the river. You can never really be done with Narhan. None of us ever is. But since we want to make the best of our time here, after a week, we'll move on to our next destination. On your way there, the scenery will scale up to epic proportions. A short stop at Lulusar Lake. Lulusar. Lulu. A snack at Babusar Top. And then finally, Gilgit. In old school style. Gilgit is a hub for mountaineering expeditions and it connects us to three of our destinations. Hunza, Skardu and Chitral. For our 30-day travel guide, we will have to limit ourselves to two of these destinations. But if time permits and you have the wherewithal for a 33-hour drive, Chitral is also one of God's masterpieces. A two-hour drive away from Gilgit is the Hunza Valley. As you scope out the Baltit and Altit forts, you stop for a moment. You realize how far you've come from where you were. And then it might dawn upon you how small you truly are in the bigger scheme of things. You've come to a town called Pasu. And the cathedral-like jagged peaks of the Pasu cones greet you to it. This is big game hunting territory. The Markhor is found here. You could stay at the Pasu cones for a while. And then you can have a look at some of the largest glaciers in the world. Over here you could attempt a trek of a little higher difficulty. Or you could walk around the village. You're here, and you should enjoy yourself. And once you have, we can move on to Skardu. Your drive will be long and tiresome, full of roadblocks. So when you get there, you'll want to rest in luxury. The Serena at Sugar Fort is a beautifully restored heritage site. You will want to explore the neighboring villages and walk on the cold desert. You'll notice that serious mountain climbers are lodged here, ready to make their way to K2 base camp. You wish you could do it one day. Perhaps you will. Perhaps you won't. You want to feast your eyes on the Kachura lakes close by. Yeah. Or perhaps exploring some of the more isolated ones neighboring it. You might take a short trip to Kaplu Palace, a similarly restored heritage site. Maybe you meditate there, as a part of the anger management your psychologist recommended. Or maybe you're fine, and you don't need it. It's possible you're in denial, and you really do need it. In either case, Kaplu Palace will surely clear out the irrational clogs of your mental plumbing. You'll really want to go to Chitral and experience it. But the punitive 13-hour drive means that most will have to do it another time. But don't worry, I have compiled a video for you of some of what you might miss. This is the Kalash tribe in Kalash Valley. Their culture is sadly slowly disappearing. So if you don't make haste, you might just miss it.
perhaps you'll feel like you made the right decision by ending it at a point where you wanted more. Let's hope your unfulfilled desire becomes the impetus for another visit here. So much is going through your head on your flight back to Islamabad. From where? You'll go home. Home. Which might now seem a little unknown. Like everything should, you think. There's still so much more in Pakistan for you to see. It's mind-bending how it constantly amazes you. I'm reminded of a quote. Everyone should believe in something. I believe. I'll go exploring. Hope you get home safely. Muru out. <laughs>